With number one, I often see students struggle at identifying what to do. What they sometimes want to do is they say, oh, I see there's a one, so I know that that can be changed to sin squared x plus cos squared x. But that's not simplifying. That's making it more complicated because you're going from having one term over there to having two terms. You always want to try to reduce your number of terms. There are special instances where you have to expand, but that only happens once or twice with identities. This isn't one of them. So what you've got to do instead, when you see something like this, is this over here is one term. So that's considered quite simple. This is two terms. And don't even worry about the sin and all of that, or well, the sin x. All you need to see is that it's two fractions. And when you add two fractions together, you have to have the same common denominator. So if you look at these two denominators, 1 minus sin x, 1 plus sin x, then your common denominator, I'm just going to call it the LCD, is going to be 1 minus sin x and 1 plus sin x. Okay, so what that means is that this sin x at the top, so I'm going to say, I'm going to work on the left hand side, that sin x at the top is going to be multiplied by 1 plus sin x, then I'm going to say plus so next, because this sin x over here is going to be multiplied by 1 minus sin x. Then all of that is going to be written over the common denominator, but you never multiply out the common denominator. You leave it in bracket form like that. Now what we can do at the top is simplify it. So I'm going to multiply the sin x into the brackets. That's going to give us sin x plus sin squared x plus sin x minus sin sin squared x and then the bottom part just stays the same. Remember you don't want to multiply out the bottom part or your denominator. And so what we can see at the top is that these two cancel and so at the top we're left with 2 sin x over 1 minus sin x 1 plus sin x. Now if we compare what we have, so let me just move this quickly if we compare it to what we are trying to get, we can see that the two sin x is in place and the two sin x is in place. Now, I said don't multiply out the bottom part, but sometimes you might have to. Why would we in this case? Because clearly the bottom part that we have is not even close to what we have at the bottom on the right hand side. But look what happens if we multiply those two parts out. It would give you 1 plus sin x minus sin x minus sin squared x. Okay, so all I did is I multiplied the two brackets in the bottom. The sin x's cancel, and so we left with 2 sin x over 1 minus sin squared x. Now we know that the identity sin squared x plus cos squared x is always equal to 1. So if we get cos squared x by itself in this identity, it will equal to 1 minus sin squared x. Now have a look here. This is what we have over here so we can replace it with cos squared x so that's going to give us 2 sin x over cos squared x which is the same as the right hand side so then we can say therefore left hand side is equal to right hand side so in the previous question that we just did the important thing to realize is fractions okay now here we have a left hand side and a right hand side obviously so the right hand side is considered one term this over here is two terms so you're typically going to start on the side that has more terms because that's easier to simplify and we like to have fractions now what we know so let's just work on the left hand side we know that tan x is always the same as so that's a minus is the same as sin x over cos x now have a look here you've got two terms there and there and they have a they fractions so you need a lowest common denominator in that case it's just going to be sin x times by cos x so we're going to end up multiplying this cos x or this one here by this cos x so that's going to give us cos squared x minus and then this sin x over here is going to end up being multiplied with that over there so that's going to be sin squared x and all of that is going to be written over the common denominator of sin x times cos x. So if you compare, always check in with your right hand side. So what we can see is that we've got the bottom part absolutely perfect. It doesn't matter if it's sin times cos or cos times sin, but the bottom part is different. 
I mean the top part is different. But you need to start seeing the following link. I'm going to bring up the grade 12 formula sheet. And what we should see is that this part at the top is over here. And this, and this part at the top is over here. So what we can do is we can say that this part is equal to cos of 2 theta. And then cos of 2 theta is equal to that. So we can change this top part of cos squared x minus sin squared x. We're going to change that to cos of 2x. And then the bottom part just stays the same, sin x times cos x. Remember at this step you never want to divide these two. Why? Because they're not the same. Even though, with that 2 being there, it makes it totally different. And then we know that this cos 2x, which is over here, is the same as any one of these three. So we're going to change it to the second one, which is 1 minus 2 sin squared x. And then we'll keep our bottom part the same. And now we can say left-hand side is equal to right-hand side.